Uh, you know, came back a few days ago, so everything's still damp from, from Thailand. So it's my wet suit. Chris Jewell is still unpacking his suitcase uh, back from the most dangerous there, mission so of his life. Uh, One of the British cave divers who rescued 12 boys and their football coach from a cave in Thailand. Just describe those moments when the last few people walked out of the cave and you knew that everybody had survived at that point. Just a huge sense of relief when we watched the last people come out of that cave. Absolutely huge sense of relief that we'd done it. Um, very sad that one person lost their lives, um, but so thankful that no one else did and that we managed to get those uh, 12 boys and their coach out. Um, and this is an unprecedented operation. Just how proud did you feel, or do you feel now? I think, I think at the time there's still a sense of disbelief. Um, we'd tried a strategy that had never been attempted before. As you say, unprecedented situation, unprecedented rescue scenario, I suppose. Um, we were still, yeah, so a sense of disbelief that, that, it, that it had worked and we'd managed to, to do our bit. And tremendously proud of everybody who played a really important part in, in this rescue. It was a big international team effort and I felt very privileged to be part of that team. Do you feel comfortable being called a hero? No, and I think uh, myself and my other fellow divers, uh, we have a set of skills that we've learned and acquired over many years doing cave diving as a hobby. And we were just in the right place to be able to use those skills to help play our part in this big rescue operation. This is the moment rescue teams found the boys alive. How, how many of you? 13, brilliant. A mission so challenging, former Thai Navy SEAL Suman Kunan lost his life. The team had also feared some of the boys wouldn't make it out alive. We knew our plan was extremely risky. We knew there was a chance that it wouldn't have 100% success rate, yeah. The boys were extremely brave. Um, they did everything right in order to make it possible for us to rescue them, both from when they were first trapped in the cave, conserving their lights uh, for the nine days until they were found, right the way through to how they acted uh, when we started the operation. Uh, I never saw a, a whimper or a tear in an eye. They're extremely calm, very brave and really strong, determined uh, young, young men. What was it like when the team first got news that they were alive and, and that you'd found them? So when they were first discovered, that created both hope and excitement, obviously, throughout the world. But it also became, it was also very, very clear to everybody involved that now, now an extraction would be considered, it would be extremely difficult. We didn't know at that point if we could actually get them out alive. And was that frightening for you? Were you kind of worried about how that process was going to unfold? We knew that any attempt that we would make would have a probability of, of not total success. We had a probability of, of losing one of the boys ultimately. Um, and there was some pressure on us obviously because of that. As they carried the first few boys to safety, hope returned. That must have been an incredible feeling. There was a sense of euphoria mixed very heavily with, uh, with a sense of the fact that we were going to have to do this again. Not just once, but twice more. We would have to go through the entire stressful process from start to finish at least two more occasions and the diving wasn't going to get any easier. But when rescuing one of the last boys for an agonising few minutes, Chris lost his way. So you were in the pitch black, holding... Holding one of the boys. Not knowing where you were going. Yeah, so at this point I, I hadn't moved and I knew the dive line couldn't be far away but I couldn't find it. What was going through your head? So I deliberately tried to slow my breathing down, tried to stay exactly where I was, stay stationary, um, deploying a strategy of looking for the line um, and then ultimately finding this electrical cable. So was it a relief at that point? Once I realised where I was, it was a relief. Obviously I still had one of the children with me, we still needed to get him out to safety. Um, hypothermia is a, a concern when you've got uh, young children in the water for that length of time. So um, I tried to, I wrapped him up in a space blanket that, that we had uh, whilst I waited for one of my diving colleagues to come past. Because it does sound like a script out of a Hollywood movie in many ways. The, the scenario was almost the, the perfect storm of a, of a rescue situation. I couldn't quite believe that these boys had managed to get this far back into a cave. The, the sections that were flooded were flooded so significantly. It was a lot of diving that we had to do and that the water level wouldn't drop for months and months. It's really quite an incredible series of events uh, and a situation to, to create. You, you almost couldn't write it. And after a global rescue operation, it's back to reality. 
And from hero to keyboard warrior, tomorrow you're going back to your job in IT. Is that That's right? right, yeah. Will that feel like a little bit of uh, a loss of adrenaline, possibly? <laughs> No, I think it will be a welcome relief to, to go back, uh, back to work, to talk about software and uh, go back to my job, see my colleagues. And um, yeah, it'd be nice to be back in the office. Will it be as exciting? Uh, that, no, but that's a, probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> From IT consultant to reluctant hero, Chris and his fellow divers are the ordinary people with an extraordinary story to tell. Minnie Stevenson, Five News.